Right now, it is our great honor when you look back at a a great football player for the University of Alabama. He was a second-team All-American back in 1977. He had a 5.6-yard average. When you look back at where that ranks at, it, it ranks six right now at the University of Alabama. He ranks 11th all-time in career rushing yards at the University of Alabama. He ranks first in career rushing yards for a fullback. Uh, when you look back at his 20, 2,519 yards, when you look back, he was an All-SEC performer in 77, 76, and 75. Second team in 76 and 75. He was first team in 77. So we are recognizing that 1977 team with the 40th anniversary this week. And one of those honorary captains, along with Mike Tucker, is Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis, welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, sir. I hope you're doing well. Oh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I mean, it's, it's, this is like a great reunion. No I doubt. Just some, I just saw some of the guys at, 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 at uh, the Nick Saban event, and some of the guys I haven't seen in like 30 years, a 40-year reunion. Wow. And I could, so everybody's here and everybody is happy. They can't wait to be part of it. this, this uh, Alabama celebration. No doubt. And, and, you know, we look at the important role – that you guys were able to lay, and any even players many, many years before you uh, played at the University of Alabama that helped lay the foundation that Nick Saban and Alabama benefits from in current day. Yeah, I think so. I think Alabama has a, has a long history of great athletes and good sports, and I think that being a part of uh, the Bear Bryant era really laid a good foundation for, for, for coaches to come in and do what they're doing today. You know, it's like building a house. No matter what you do in the living room, if you ain't got a good foundation, it's not going to work. So we, we help we help build that foundation, and I'm really proud of that. So all these guys can hold their head up high when we uh, enter that stadium tomorrow. Now, will you guys be having an event? Uh, and I know it's not uh, – it, it's it's a reunion. I, is part of the event tonight that you guys will get together and recognize a lot of those 77 players? No, we have, we have an event tonight at uh, Bob Plumhauer's place. We have an event tonight. Just, okay. just to get together where we can eat and talk and tell some stories. And then we'll, we'll, we'll meet in the A-Club room tomorrow before we hit the field. So, yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, tonight going to be a, a good night. Absolutely. All right, Johnny Davis. Now, we don't want you to share all the good stories. We'll let you share those with your teammates. But uh, can you at least share one with your memory of that 1977 championship team? Though that 1977 championship team had some great players. I mean, that's what I remember. We had Ozzie Newsom, Dwight Stevenson, uh, Mike Tucker. We, we, had, we, we had some good, hard-nosed players. And uh, we, we didn't win the national championship. So we don't, we don't like coming in second place, you know. Anybody that played at Alabama – doesn't like coming in second place. But I, I, I remember the, the most, my biggest remember was the Ohio State game. Because we was able to, I think that was the first time Bear Bryant and Woody Hayes ever coached against each other, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And we was able to win that game, I think, 35 to 7. What a whipping that was. <laughs> and I was able to score a touchdown in that game. So we finished strong that year. That's, that's the thing that I remember. We gave it our all. Even though we, then we had to wait and see what the polls see what the polls was going to do as far as voting for us. And we didn't win in that championship, but we had a great team. That, that, those guys, were, we were really close. When you look back at uh, the, the great memories, I, I want to talk about the way that uh, Coach Bryant got everything out of every single player. He made you play at, at a maximum capacity. If you were a B player, you probably played an A level. If you were an A, you probably went to A+. Plus. Uh, if you were a C player, you got up to a B. How did Coach Bryant get that much out of all of his players? How did he get that much? First, one first thing that he did, uh, we worked harder than anyone. Uh, we, we put in we put in the practice hours, and uh, he always talked about the little things. Take care of the small details, and he said, "And the big wins will take care of themselves." So we was always prepared, and he always talked about expect the unexpected. So as a player at Alabama, we were never surprised about something that the other team was doing because he always talked about expect the unexpected. 
and we worked hard. You know, a couple of times we he just started the practices over, and then you know, like <laughs> he didn't like the practice. He just started over. We'd be out there at six or seven o'clock at night. So we did whatever it took to be the best team in college football. How did Alabama prepare you? Because you went on and you left here and you was a member of the uh, Super Bowl winning San Francisco 49ers team uh, under John McKay. Excuse me, uh, Bill Walsh. Well, you know, I was drafted by Tampa Bay and I, I was a blocking fullback for Rick and Bell, you know, from USC. Sure. And uh, we, played for the, we played the Los Angeles Rams for the NFC Championship. We was nine points from the Super Bowl. <laughs> and then the next uh, two years later, John McKay traded me to San Francisco, and that was a long ride to Frisco. I didn't want to go to California. I didn't know nobody, but I went to San Francisco, and uh, lo and behold, my childhood dream was to always you know play in the Super Bowl, and I didn't know that my 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 dream was coming true that year, and by going to San Francisco and playing for Bill Walsh. I was able to get my Super Bowl ring, San Francisco. That was a miracle. But I did come back to Tampa and uh, show John McKay my Super Bowl ring. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> now, what, what was yeah. that conversation like? Uh, you know what he said. He was, he was like, uh, get, get out of here, Davis. I saw him in a restaurant. I said, Coach, thanks, Coach. Look at the ring. He said, hey, Davis, get, get, get away from me. He didn't want to see it, but I showed it to him. Let me the, ask. Diamonds, the diamonds are looking good. He can see it from across the room, too. <laughs> wow, wow. I, I love it. I love the energy. Uh, we are talking to Johnny Davis, one of the all-time greats at the University of Alabama. When you look back at uh, his credentials that he put on the field, Super Bowl winning player and a big part of that 1977 team that we're going to be honoring the 40th anniversary. Let me ask you, when you talk about playing for legendary coaches, you played for Coach Bryant, you played for John McKay, you played for Bill Walsh, uh, you played for Mar- Marty Schottenheimer and, and so many others. Stanley yeah, Tiglano, yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, when you think about those great play- coaches, is there one common characteristic that all of them had, or were they all in different styles and in different ways that they handled players? <laughs> well, you said only, only common characteristic that they had was the they, they had a coaching job. But but all of those coaches were different. You know, Coach Ryan was really tough, and, and he took care of the small details. Uh, John McKay, he, he, he's more uh, he, simple. He, he, he used a real simplistic offense, you know, pitch right, pitch left, fullback, blocking, blocking. You know, I got a lot of concussions in those games with John McKay. <laughs> And then Bill Walsh was a genius as far as putting plays together. I mean, as far as a, 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 a strategy, as far as strategy, Bill Walsh was the best coach. No one can find plays better than Bill Walsh. He, he would be a genius in my book as far as he, because that, that play that put us in the Super Bowl, when Dwight Clark made that great catch against the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game, do you remember that game? I do not. Yeah. I, I, was a, yeah, you, I was just a kid. He was a kid, but anyway, with 30 seconds left in the game, Joe Montana scrambles. Dwight Clark jumps 10 feet in the air and completes the pass. And, but the whole world thought that was a broken play. But guess what? Bill Walsh would practice that play every day after practice. And we only used it one time, and it got us in the Super Bowl. It looked like a broken play, but that was a planned play. Let me let me ask you, because you had a lot of success against Vanderbilt. I take you back to 1977. You had 153 yards against Vanderbilt in that 77 game. You went on to, uh, and, and have a lot of success there. Let me ask you, when I look back at last week with Alabama going for over 500, then they took a knee and it went down to 496 is what total yards rushing against Vanderbilt. I mean, somebody like Johnny Davis should like a rushing performance like that from the Crimson Tide last week. Now, why'd you bring up Vanderbilt? I'm going to start crying. Why is that? You don't, know, <laughs> you don't know. When I played against Vanderbilt, you know, up until that point, point, Johnny Davis had never lost a yard. And it was raining that day. And they, 
think they ran a draw play, and I slipped and lost one yard against Vanderbilt. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm crying now. Man, I didn't mean to bring up bad memories, Johnny. That was my fault. My fault. Oh, no, no, but no. We got, we got, to, we got, to, we got to look at the bad memories with the good memories. Sure. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of that's part of being mature is that growing really, up. Is that really the only time you ever lost a yard? The only time. Wow. And guess what? Guess what? At the reunion today, we had at, at, at the, the Nick Saban lunch, so two of the Lamas was there, and one Lama admitted where I lost that yard. He missed the block. Oh, he man. He finally admitted. He said, Dave, I got to tell you why you lost that yard. I missed that block. But I can't blame him. So well, normally I would have ran over my lineman and him. <laughs> so 40 years later, he finally admits to you that he missed the block. He finally admitted, yes. Yeah. And he said he's going to buy me a steak dinner next time. All right. Well, good, good. But but I'd love to get your thoughts. I mean, Alabama had a dominating performance over Vanderbilt and a lot of it on the ground, 496 yards rushing last week. Any thoughts? Oh, and I think that's great because Alabama has state. They're playing as a team. They got some great running backs that play together. I mean, it's like an unselfish team. Whoever gets in there and gets to play, and they make the yardage, the other guy cheers for them. And I think that's great. And that's that that type of camaraderie is hard to develop. And I think Coach Saban has done a good job developing that. And well, that's what the those type of players that are real winners, real winners are the type of players that support each other. And these guys are really supporting each other. And as a team, that's a lot of yardage. And I think, guess what? The best is yet to come. Hey, it's – what I mean, can you help us describe the sense of pride that you have in what Alabama's not a, able to accomplish over the years? Certainly, I know you're proud of that. But with what Nick Saban has been able to do here in Tuscaloosa in the last – 10 years, a lot of times we're comparing it to what you guys did in the 70s, and we thought we would never duplicate that type of success. Well, I think what we did in the 70s was, was a good foundation, and, uh, and, and, to, and to bring in a coach like Coach Saban, I mean, he just took it to a, another level, you know, with, with that type of success that we had, and he had a lot to build on, and I, I'm just proud of that Coach Saban became part of the Alabama family and was able to come in and take this team to a whole new level. And we, we were so proud of this team. It's like no one has any animosity. Everybody's supporting each other. Because guess what? Alabama football is about winning. That's the most important thing. Winning's not everything. It's the only thing. And that's what an Alabama player has been taught. And that's what we see uh, Coach Saban uh, instilling in these players. And that that type of performance is showing on the field. Yeah, but let me let me go back because you bring up that characteristic. You spotted that on this current Alabama team from your football perspective. When I go back to the Cleveland Browns media guide and I find different ways to describe you, many of the players, your teammates, described you as unselfish, hardworking, and always smiling. He said B1 is a powerful blocker and an excellent kickoff coverage man. I mean, let me ask you, when you talk about unselfish and hardworking, does that go back your days in the NFL? Does that go back to Coach Bryant? Uh, that you, know, that, you, know, that, you know, a lot of guys like that came out, came out and played in the NFL. So I, I was able to play 10 years as a fullback. You know, the thing is that, the, the, that my character was built at Alabama. So I, I was in my sixth and seventh year, and the – Coach Marty Schottenheimer asked me, I saw my name on the board as R1 on the kickoff coverage team. I went home, I started crying. I said, my Davis, I had, cause, cause, you know, I was always a starter, you know, in Alabama, then I started the camp on my rookie second year. And so I was never on the kickoff coverage team. Now I'm in my sixth, seventh year, and I see my name as R1 on the kickoff coverage team. So I, I had to go home and do some soul surgery, and I came back, and and, and I, was, I covered I covered that kick, and I almost took out the whole wedge, and they gave me a new nickname, the B one bomber, and all that comes from my character that was developed at the University of Alabama, my, my foundation. 
What does it mean to you that Coach Bryant called you the best fullback I've ever coached? Well, he didn't have to coach anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, come on. I don't think he just said that because of that. I mean, listen, there's been some great fullbacks here. Uh, but, but he no, called – I, I was just joking. Yeah, know. right, right. But you, he called you the best fullback I've ever coached. Well, I don't like to brag on myself, but I, I know that I, I gave it my all at Alabama at fullback. I know that's what I know for sure. And Johnny Davis gave it his all. And if I'm the greatest fullback, Coach Brown said I'm the greatest fullback that he ever coached, then Johnny Davis should be in the Alabama Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, we're going to have to get you there, too. We're, 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 <laughs> we're, we're going to promote you because I know you're a nominee coming up and. uh They've got 50 voters out there that needs to be listening to this interview and, and looking at the credentials that you bring to the table. And not only your impact at the University of Alabama, but also in high school football. I mean, you were a, a four-year letter there at, uh, for Bill Joyner at Sidney Lanier. Uh, you right. Were, uh, All-State, 1973. Uh, and, and you look back, I mean, can you walk us through that transition of, of how you decided to commit to the University of Alabama? Well, you sure you want to know? Yes, I yeah. <laughs> well, at first I was going to Auburn. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And then Coach Bryant came by. And Coach Bryant came by, and he, and he offered me a scholarship at the University of Alabama. And I was so glad he, and that he came by. And, uh, and I saw that the University of Alabama was the best school for me as far as my position at fullback because it was running the wishbone. And in the wishbone, you know, the fullback is favorite a lot in the wishbone. And so Coach Brown and, and, and Coach John Mitchell came by. And I, I said, I want to go to Alabama. I had to, I had to call Auburn and say, I changed my mind. I'm roll tied. I'm going to roll some tide. <laughs> what they say? No, 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 don't go. What, 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 what did they say? Wait, who said it? Auburn. 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 They were in shock. They didn't. They couldn't say, I could hear a pin drop. Wow. They didn't. But I mean, I, I couldn't. You know, when Coach Bryant comes to your house and offers you a scholarship, I mean, how, who's going to turn down Coach Bryant? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody was going to turn yeah. down Coach Bryant. I mean, even as a player at Alabama, with, uh, with some of the other players on my team, we, we were speaking about that today. That everybody had a lot of respect for Coach Bryant, and. Uh, and when when he when he, when, he, when he when he spoke, people listened, and we listened, and he I mean he was just a, a great leader. Wow, well we we love the history and and certainly uh, listen your name comes up quite often right here with a lot of our callers. Matter of fact, uh, we were talking about a couple of weeks ago about Johnny Davis. I mean, just out of the blue, we were talking about players and different moments and different times and. Your name came up, and I brought it up that people should connect with you. Uh, sometimes you do these wonderful Facebook Live videos where you put up and you're playing the piano. And and you're if people may or may not know, uh, Johnny Davis was a hard-nosed football player, but he is a very talented professional musician up in New York uh, and plays the piano professionally that started back in Montgomery and you put up these Facebook Live videos, and I love them, man. I, I wish you'd do more of them. Yeah, I play for. I used to play for a church. I grew up playing the piano. My mother, well, if you want to know the true story, my mother made me play the piano when I was a kid. I said, Mom, can I play football? She said, Boy, you cannot play football unless you learn to play the piano. I was in this, this like storefront, Pentecostal church. So my brother was beating the drums, and mom was singing, my sister was singing. So, so I, my job was I had to learn to play the piano. I just started playing with one finger, and lo and behold, a year later, I realized I realized that I had a gift from God for playing the piano because I I could listen and I almost play anything that that I could would hear. So it, from that point on, I've been practicing and practicing, and, and now I'm, I'm playing professionally. I played. You know, for a church in New Jersey, so it's that's been a good blessing. And also, I I played fullback for ten years, and I didn't sprain a finger. And you know, what I'm saying? that's a miracle. Wow! That I didn't, that I didn't mess up my hand. Wow! That, that's that, that's a blessing. 
Yes, it is. Well, Johnny, just on that, just on accident, it's I right. play for it. it was, it was, Hey. But but you didn't you didn't have to. I was watching you perform the other night, Amazing Grace, and you were doing it on Facebook Live, and and you were playing Amazing Grace, and I I was just you didn't have to sing the the the, the way that you played that piano, and the way that you moved, and the way that you just sort of brought some energy. You didn't have to say any words, man. All of us uh, were probably taken back to so many different moments. But uh, I wish you'd do more of those Facebook Live. I enjoyed those, and uh, uh, folks can connect with you, follow you there on Facebook, and and connect those. But uh, Listen, we're going to do a lot of pushing, just like you did at the University of Alabama. We're going to talk about uh, trying to get you into that Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. But uh, t- take, I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, sir. T- take this weekend in, and um, you know, from all of us here in Tuscaloosa uh, that are part of this Alabama tradition, this Bama Nation, uh, just a big salute to what you were able to accomplish at the University of Alabama, along with your teammates. I mean, you won a lot of a lot of games. You never lost to Auburn. He never lost to Tennessee. I mean, I mean, those are those are things that you guys need to share tonight. I mean, you never lost to Auburn, never lost to Tennessee, and you were part of one of the greatest dynasties in all of college football history. Johnny Davis, we salute you from all of us here in Tuscaloosa, and we appreciate what you mean to the Alabama nation. All right, thank you. And tell all the Bama fans out there that I love all of them. And roll, tide, roll. <laughs> 